Are you ready for the word? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's stand up. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody say restoring, restoring. lost years by the anointing. The beginning of this year, well, really the end of last year, the Spirit of God spoke to me and gave me a theme for this year. Every year, the Lord speaks to me and gives me a prophetic theme for the year, indicating to me how he's going to move and how he's going to operate by the Spirit. Indicating how the Spirit of God shall move and visit his people under our ministry. And he spoke to me, he said, that the year of 2019 shall be the year of speed. And he spoke to me this week, well, really last week, and he spoke to me, he said, Andre, he said, this month, the month of May, is really the most important month in the year of speed. He said, because what I gave you to preach in January, and to preach in February, and to preach in March and to preach in April was all to get the people ready for what I'm going to share with you now. And said, he said, so this month in the year of speed is the most important month. So there is a revelation because the Bible says that grace and grace, hallelujah, grace and peace is multiplied unto us through the knowledge of him that called us unto glory and virtue so it takes knowledge for grace to be released the word there for knowledge is the word epignosis that is a type of knowledge hallelujah that's revelation on the inside of you amen so it says grace and peace shall be multiplied unto you through the epignosis through the revelation knowledge so there is a revelation knowledge about restoring lost years that needs to enter into your spirit when the knowledge enters into your spirit the knowledge will trigger a grace ah, yeah, yeah. it will trigger the grace of speed but if you don't get the knowledge, the grace of speed shall not be released. It's why the word of God says that the knowledge of the glory shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Now we always say the glory of God shall cover the earth. But the Bible says the knowledge of the glory. Because it's the knowledge of the glory, the insight of the glory that triggers the glory. Because knowledge is a trigger in the realm of the spirit. It's why Jesus said, Woe unto you lawyers, for you have kept back the key of knowledge, the key of insight, the key of revelation. So I declare by the anointing that this month there shall be an apocalypse, which means it's an unveiling of hidden information that you've never had before. It shall enter into your spirit, because except this knowledge enters into your spirit, the grace of speed cannot come up on your life because grace is multiplied unto you through what knowledge therefore if you want to grow in the grace of God and receive divine deposits from heaven above then you need to have what knowledge now for some of you who don't thoroughly understand what I mean by the word grace the word grace is the unmerited unasked for favor of God that releases things from heaven into the lives of people so the grace of God is something that you do not deserve it is undeserved favor but it's more than undeserved favor it is undeserved hallelujah it's God giving you what you don't deserve hallelujah it's God giving you what you don't deserve so there are things that heaven has for you that you don't deserve but heaven says they will be released onto you through your knowledge through your insight through your revelation they will be released unto you they will be triggered uh, by your knowledge so you got to be somebody who is very very focused on getting knowledge because the world of the supernatural operates of knowledge that is why even the world of the demonic operates of knowledge have you noticed 
that all demonic people they all have books labra shisha they all have books to read how the demonic world operates so you are fighting against them and you have no books you're just saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus but you have no knowledge you have no insight you have no revelation so you're just going empty of knowledge empty of light, empty of revelation to go and fight the forces of darkness hallelujah when any, any high ranking witch or warlock have the library full of books nambrobo shikata so if Satan's people have to read, hi. Satan's people have to read. He copied that from God. So God's people have to do what? Read. That means they have to what? Learn how the world of the supernatural functions. So this month, you're going to learn some things that I know in my spirit you've never heard before about how the world of the supernatural functions is going to be a deep month hallelujah I couldn't preach the revelation in this month to you except I took you through bloodline deliverance hallelujah I had to take you through certain things by the spirit before I could preach to you the revelation of this month but I've got to tell you when you get the revelation of this month the Bible says that he that is born of God overcometh the world the word world means is cosmos and the cosmos doesn't speak about the earth it speaks about the protocol of the earth it speaks about the process of the earth it speaks about the distance it speaks about the time but there is a revelation that if you get it you overcome process you overcome protocol you overcome time what it takes 10 years to be done in the world system the Bible says that you can do what overcome that system that he that is born of God overcometh the world that means you can overcome the protocol you can overcome the time you can overcome the process but it is knowledge intensive I say it is knowledge intensive. So somebody is going to lift up their hands today. Somebody is going to open their heart today. Somebody is going to put on their thinking cap today. Somebody is going to take some notes today. Somebody is going to go home and study what I've preached today so that it can get into your spirit. So you can catch up. Because one of the greatest miracles is the miracle of restoration of time. Oh, hallelujah. There is an anointing that can restore time. It can restore lost years. It can cause you to catch up by the grace of speed. But that revelation, that grace, that type of miracle is only produced by the informed. And spiritual information to bring you into breakthrough shall be released today hallelujah let's go into the word hallelujah let's go into the word let's read together our foundation scripture numbers chapter 14 so let's read together so all the congregation lifted their voices and cried hallelujah continue reading Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land if the lord delights in us then he will bring us into this land and give it to us a land which flows with milk and honey only do not rebel against the lord nor fear the people of the land for they are our bread their protection has departed from them 
and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And all the congregations said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them. And it will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. And Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear it. For by your might you brought these people up from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, Lord, are among these people, that you, Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands above them. And you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations which have heard of your fame will speak, saying, because the Lord was not able to bring these people to the land which he swore to give them, therefore he killed them in the wilderness. And now, I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. But truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now in these ten times and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complains against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered, according to your entire number, from twenty years old and above, Except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I will make you dwell in. But your little ones, whom you said will be victims, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised, shall be shepherds in the wilderness forty years, and bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness." According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, for each day you have shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do to, to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there shall they die. Then Moses told these words to all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. They rose early in the morning. I went up to the top of the mountain, saying, Here we are, and we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Now why do you transgress the command of the Lord? For this will not succeed. Do not go up, lest you be defeated by your enemies. For the Lord is not among you. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword. Because you have turned away from the Lord, the Lord shall not be with you presumed to go up to the mountain top. Nevertheless, neither the ark of the covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed from the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who dwelt in that mountain came down and attacked them and drove them back as far as Herma. Next scripture, let's read one last scripture. Let's read it together. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Oh, blessed Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Give me utterance in the Holy Ghost to prophesy that which you put in my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Take your seats. Hallelujah. There is a revelation of times and seasons that you need to grasp. Now, this phrase is seen throughout the scripture, times and seasons, because you need to understand that in the realm of the spirit, there is no time. Time does not exist in the spirit realm. Time exists in the natural realm. But even though time exists in the natural realm, the time that exists in the natural realm is not cast iron. What do I mean? Right now, in Australia, it is not the time now. Right now, it's what? It's almost 11.30. That is not the time in Australia. And that is certainly not the time in Brazil. And that is certainly not the time in Chile nor at the time in London. So in the natural, time is not a precise thing. If you say, I am going to speak to him at 2 o'clock, depending on where you are, it may be the next day. So in the realm of the natural, time is not even precise. Now in the realm of the spirit, there is no time. But in the realm of the spirit, there is what you call seasons. So in the realm of the spirit, periods are measured by seasons. That is, in, the Bible says, to everything there is a season. So everything that God wants to do, he allocates a season for it, which is a period in the realm of the spirit. So in the realm of the spirit, you have what are called seasons. So the realm of the spirit operates by seasons seasons so your entire life when god orchestrated your life he could have said for his life he has 40 seasons i am going to in 40 seasons bring him into the fulfillment of his destiny another person may have 60 seasons now the bible says that he maketh all things beautiful in his time he says you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season because the reason why he uses season is that in each season in the realm of the spirit there is a particular what fruit there's a particular thing that god wants to do in your life in that particular season now so you need to understand this that in the realm of the spirit your life is lived by what seasons hallelujah now what you need to understand about seasons is there's a big difference between seasons and time you see because time doesn't wait for no man hallelujah so time matches on if you cannot hold back time but in the realm of the spirit a season can stop jesus a season can stop so you need to understand in the realm of the spirit it's seasons in the realm of the natural it's what time now because you live in the realm of the natural you operate with what time but in the realm of the spirit they operate with what seasons now seasons can stop so you read the story of the children of israel it was the season for them to take Canaan land Lamanad. it was the season and it was the season for them to go take it and the prophet of god issued the decree and the 12 spies went in and 10 spies came back with an evil report and the people bought the evil report and they picked up stones to stone moses and aaron and the glory of god came down to protect the servant of the lord and the lord spoke he said you 
are not living this season he said you are right now you are in the season of the wilderness and I have another season for you to enter which is the season of taking what Canaan land because of what you've done you're going to stay stuck on this season for 40 years so if there were 40 years in one season but in the realm of time it was what 40 years but in the realm of the spirit it was the same season that is why the scenery of your life can stay the same even though even though time is going Oh, Hale. Because for the 40 years, all they did was go round and round the mountain. They went round and round the mountain. Same scenery, but they're getting older. Because they are stuck in a season, but time is going. Hala Baba Shakai. I said they're stuck in a season. Now, there is a season for you to be single. And for most people, there's a season for you to get married. You can get stuck in the season to be single until you're 102. La ba ta ta ta. Are you with me? Because you're what? You're stuck in the season. Now, there is a season for you. There's a season for you. Hallelujah. For you, the Bible says that he brought us to the wealthy place. So there's a season for you, hallelujah, where you prepare for expansion and then God brings you into the wealthy place. But you could get stuck in the season where you are suffering affliction. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. So you could be in a season of affliction, but you never come out. Jesus. La -ta -ta. So you're stuck in the season of affliction. Now, the only thing you've got to realize is that in the realm of the spirit, the reason why the Bible talks about times and seasons is because you operate with time. The spirit realm operates with what? Seasons. But the thing about it is that you are a spirit being in a natural body. So you have got to learn how to sync your time with your spiritual season. Oh my God. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So you're going to learn how to do what? Sync. Ha, like how you're going to sync your phone. Hallelujah. You're going to sync your phone, hallelujah, with a computer for the pictures to do what? Move. So in order for you to receive what God has for you in the season, your time has to sync with what? His season. Now this is what happened. It was the season for them to go in and take Canaan land. And they felt it was time to go back to Egypt. So the season in the spirit did not match with the time. You see, you are responsible for making sure that you sense what God has for you in the spirit so that in the realm of time, you actually know this is now the time to love. This is not the time for war. So it was the time for war. They were saying it's the time to go back. So they were out of sync with the season. La Baba Shakata. And because they're out of sync with the season, they get stuck on the season. And they died in that season. And they stayed in that season for 40 years. Because in the realm of the spirit, Seasons don't move. They only move when they're finished. Jesus. That is why you can say, I don't understand why after so many years, I am still crying the same tears over the thing that happened to me. Because you're not out of the season. Your body has aged, but you're still stuck in the season. You have not moved from the season. Jesus. Your heart was broken in the season. But time has gone. But you're still stuck in the season. So you could be, you have 50 year olds who are still crying about rejection they had at 16. That means they are stuck in the same season when they were 16. Ma, 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 na, ma. Age goes on, but they're stuck in the season. But I am sent today. Hallelujah. 
I'm sent this month to get people on stock from seasons that they're stuck in. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is one of the mysteries of life. It's why it says, to everything there is a season. Now what happened is, God looked at them and said, I am not releasing the anointing for you to move into the season. Then when Moses issued the judgment of the Lord, they changed their mind. They said, oh my God, hey, hey, we missed the season. It's now time for war. Let's go and fight. So they decided, let's now go and fight. But guess what? The season gone. <laughs> Jesus. I said, the season is what? Gone. The season is no longer available. They went to go fight, and guess what? Defeated. Jesus. So you are responsible for understanding what is the season God has you. You could be in a season for 20 years. Because you never sink with what is required of you in the realm of time. Shakatabasai. Oh, hallelujah. What is required of you in the realm of time? Jesus. Labrabashakata. Now, seasons are spiritual, whilst time is natural. <laughs> oh, can I preach this like I feel it? I said, seasons are spiritual, whilst time is natural. Savavavavadabasai. There are people who never leave the season of school. At the age of 58, 60, they're still taking courses. And they've still never used what they learned. <laughs> they are done what? They are stuck in a season. Because there's a time when you learn, then there's a time when you leverage what you learned, hallelujah, to move ahead in your life. Hallelujah. Now, there are some people who they had a problem with their mother when they were 14. They are 65 and they're still talking about it. 65. They have not got out of what? That season. They are stuck in the season. They are still broken from that season. So they are broken. Just as they were broken at 16, they are broken at 65. But time has gone. Jesus. Laba soferebede. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I said somebody is going to get unstuck. Somebody's season is going to change. Jesus. Now, hallelujah. Now, your season creates the spiritual atmosphere around you. Your season creates the climate around you. So there is a spiritual climate around your life that is created by your season. So in the realm of time, oh my God, hi, 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 hi. you could have a season of being alone, solitude. But in the realm of time, you're trying to get married. And let me tell you, it will never work. Because all around you is the atmosphere of single. Because you're stuck. Have you ever watched those movies when they say you're stuck in a time loop? Well, that's what it is. You're stuck in a what? Time loop. You just keep recycling. Well, that's what happened with Israel. He said you're going to be stuck in a time loop for 40 years. But there shall be a rising up in the church. I said there shall be a rising up in the church. I said there shall be a rising up in the church. Because men and women shall understand the principle of seasons and times. In this church, I don't preach stories, I preach mysteries. <laughs> so you don't come here to hear a Bible story. You come here to hear spiritual mysteries to give you mastery over the affairs of life. Man, they said, hey, Jesus. So that is why 
You can be stuck in a season. Now, everybody gets in a season during your student years where those are not money years. But you can leave school, go to work, but you still have the student atmosphere of no money around you. Because you're stuck in that season. Jesus. There's a season where you live in your mother's house and your father's house. There's a season, listen, there's a season where you actually, hallelujah, I mean, there are seasons where you do that. I mean, then there are seasons when it's time to do what? Move. Now, you can get stuck in a season. Are you with me? Now, everybody's life, your seasons are scheduled. My seasons are different from your seasons. Are you with me? And this is what can happen. You can be behind seasons. Because what happened during that 40 years, God could have had 25 different seasons for the children of Israel. And for all that 40 years, they got stuck on that season. So, there are seasons that I have. That's different from the seasons that you have. So, there's a season for me to get my house. There's a season for me to get my wife. So, my seasons, they're different from what? Your seasons. Like, when I got married, the Lord spoke to me. He said, get your children now. Because after you pass 40, is when you're going to start traveling. <laughs> so, I was told to get my kids quick. Are you with me? So that is what? A particular what? Season. So I was told that at that particular time. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you've got to understand this. The Lord spoke to me. He said, everybody in this church, every adult in this church, is behind in their seasons. He said, by the way, the only people in this church who are on schedule with the seasons are the teenagers and the kids. <laughs> They're the ones we're concerned about, but they are on schedule. <laughs> The ones that are out of schedule are the older ones. Because we have missed so many seasons. Because the young ones, right now, is their season of school and they're in school. <laughs> it's the season of college and they're in college. Now, you are 50 and you're still in the season of college. This is the problem. <laughs> are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. He said to the young ones, he even spoke to me specifically. Right? Hallelujah. In fact, he actually spoke to me of young Tiffany. Young Tiffany, stand up. How old are you, Tiffany? She's 25. Okay. The Lord spoke to me. He said, of all the adults in the church, he says, Tiffany is only missing five seasons. She's the least. Five seasons. And she's 25. Now, what about some of us? That is why you get to a point in your life and in your spirit you, you, you say, I am not where I'm supposed to be. Something is wrong. Where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to have, inside your spirit, not in your head, inside your spirit, there is a dissatisfaction. <laughs> Jesus. Inside your spirit, there's a what? Dissatisfaction. Because your spirit tells you, you are behind schedule. Your spirit tells you, I don't know, man. I'm looking at this job. I'm looking at this place. But I am supposed to be here, man. My spirit is telling me. 
not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be further. And what happens, because you don't know what's happening, you get what? Frustrated. It's like, my God, man. And then, you, and then, and then you have some issues that come up. You say, again? Same problem again? Same sin here again? Same issues again? But I thought I'd pass this by now. That's because you are in a season, your season stuck. Jesus. La Baba Shaka time. But today, Kataba. Hey, I said today, the God who unstucks people shall step into your life and get you unstuck. Jesus. Jesus. La Baba Shaka Jesus. All this mom that's what I'm focusing on. Today is just the appetizer. Today I'm just getting you ready. Because there is a revelation. There is a knowledge. The Bible said the knowledge of the glory. There is a knowledge of how, if you're stuck in a season, how to get unstuck. La Baba Shai. Hallelujah. There is a knowledge. Hey, hey, this month is the month for that knowledge. Hey, hey, hey. Jesus. Who oh, Lord. So if you say, listen, by now I know. I know they say you have to wait, but I've been waiting for long. I don't know whether I am the poster child for the word wait. I know they say wait on the Lord, but this waiting I think it's beyond waiting on the Lord. I know they say, someday, somehow, someday, somehow, your miracle is passing you by. Could somebody tell me what's the name of the road and the name of the street where my miracle is passing me by? Because I've been waiting for a long, long time and it ain't passed by yet. It's not passed by because your miracle is tied to a season that you haven't entered in. The season of taking Jericho, of taking Canaan, was a season in the future. And they were in the season of the wilderness. In wilderness season, you cannot take Jericho. You have to go into what? Jericho season to take Jericho. Jesus. Now, the Bible says, it says, God has put eternity in the hearts of people. What does that mean? It means your spirit man, everybody's spirit man, is connected to the realm of eternity where there is no time, only seasons. <laughs> Every human being, their spirit, it says God has put eternity in their hearts. So everyone's spirit is connected to the realm of eternity where there is no time. Jesus. But they must live in the natural where there is time. And they must learn how to sync what they do on earth with the season they are in, in the spirit. Jesus. Can I go further? Okay. Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 8 from verse 4 to 7. Let's read together. It says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? He who keeps his command shall experience nothing harmful. And a wise man's heart discerns what? Time and judgment. So, because for every matter, there is a time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man increases greatly for he doesn't know what shall happen so who can tell him when it will occur he says the misery of man is great because man has a problem in discerning what shall occur and when it shall occur and man is out of time with when things are supposed to happen so when is the season for you to build your house you say it's now time for me to go on holiday. <laughs> when 
is the season for you to take this girlfriend, hallelujah, and set you with her and build a home. You say, it is time for me to sample Argentinian flavor, Colombian flavor, and uh, Jamaican coffee. <laughs> Are you with me? Because that's what is the what is the season. So, so what happens? You see, it's all about seasons. So, when is the season? You do not discern. As we say, a wise man's heart is able to discern the time for everything. A wise man discerneth time and judgment. He discerns the time for something, and he and he judges what season it is. Jesus. La pata shata. Listen. Life. Life. Living life is work. That is why anybody who is a busybody is going to fail. Because you need to be a professor over your life. Shakataya. Just understanding your seasons and times is a lot of work. <laughs> Just understanding when the spiritual climate of your life changes. So you know what to do. Hey, there are many of you. You are in the same problem that Peter was in. Jesus told Peter. He said, Satan has desired to shift you like wheat. But I prayed that your faith fail not. And when you are strengthened, convert the brethren. Peter did not discern that he was about to go into a season of warfare. He did not know. Jesus spoke to him. He said, Peter, he said, the shepherd is going to be smitten. I want all my disciples to flee. Peter said, everyone can flee, but me, I am fleeing. Jesus said, flee. He said, I am fleeing. He said, Peter, by the time the cock crows, you would have betrayed me three times. Because Peter did not know and discern that he was going to encounter a breaking point moment. Yes, yes, yes. And Jesus was trying to protect him from his breaking point. Yes, 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 yes. Everybody has a breaking point. And Jesus was protecting him from his breaking point. But the man could not discern nothing. And he walked right into it with the warning of Jesus. Oh boy. Are you with me? He walked what? Right into it with the warning of Jesus. So you got to discern this. So you need to be an expert. So you need to say, Lord, give me the grace. Right now, if when you live here, your number one job is like, so say right now, listen, don't talk to me too much. I need to understand what is my season and what am I supposed to do because I have been out of sync for too long. Where is I told you what happened to my cousin. She was sleeping one day and at three o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke her up and gave her a dream of her father in a coffin. And the Lord said, pray. She said, wow. I will pray at 6 o'clock when I wake up. And so she went to bed. At 6 o'clock, she woke up and began to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, protect my father. Whatever Satan wants to do with him, I bind it in the name of Jesus. At 7 o'clock, she got a call that her dad had a heart attack at 5 o'clock. That's my cousin. She said, I couldn't cry at the funeral. She said, God woke me at 3 o'clock. He died at 5 o'clock. I was praying at 6 o'clock. Jesus. She was out of sync. It was a season of intercession to intercept what Satan wanted to do with her father. And she missed it. Now let me tell you. The suffering that lady suffered she suffered and made suffering suffer. Because her father
father, her mother had died. Now her father died. And the brothers took all the father's property and all his wealth. And they left her as a pauper. She had to come and live in my house. Had no school fees, nothing. Boy, I have never seen somebody pray like this. Now, you know in England, you have what's called the closet, where you put clothes in. I had an exercise bike in there with lots of jackets and coats. Because we lived in a two-bedroom flat on the 17th floor, and she was sleeping in the living room, when she wanted to pray, she had to go inside the closet on the bicycle. And she stayed there for three hours. Because guess what? No money. So she had to pray prayers that she never had to pray. Because she was out of time to just pray one hour and stop her dad dying. She was out of time. Her time did not sync with the season. La braba Jesus. Woo. Am I helping somebody here? Hallelujah. Next scripture. Now, Satan does not control seasons. Jesus doesn't control seasons. The Holy Spirit doesn't control seasons. There's only one person that controls seasons. That's the Heavenly Father. That is part of what he handles. It says, Acts chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Jerusalem? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. So, Jesus does not handle times and seasons. The Holy Spirit doesn't handle times and seasons. The Heavenly Father does. So the Heavenly Father is the one that knows your season and what time it is for you to do on earth based on your season. Are you hearing this? Now what Satan does is this. Let's read the next scripture. Satan, he watches seasons. This is what he does. Matthew chapter 13, okay, verse 24 to 30. Another parable he put forth to saying, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sows good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said, Sir, did we not sow good seeds in your field? How then does it have tears? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, least while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both go together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tears and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn he said while men slept an enemy sowed tears what satan does satan sows tears into your season it was the season for peter to take over from jesus and satan came to sift him like wheat by sowing a tear of betrayal. My God. So what Satan does, he corrupts your season so you can stay stuck in your season. He's a corrupter of seasons. And what he does, he sows, he plants something in your season while you are sleeping, whilst you are paying attention. Because Peter wasn't paying attention. He says, an enemy has done this while men slept. In your marriage, you are supposed right now to have a season of the greatest joy. But while you slept, the enemy sowed some tears in your marriage. 
in your family you're supposed to be having a wonderful time and what happened while you slept the enemy came and sowed some tears inside the family and now you're looking at yourself in the house and you're wondering how did we get here what happened an enemy came while and you think how did this thing get so far the seed was sowed it was growing and you didn't know because he's a corrupter of seasons he's a strategist you've got to understand that Jesus oh my god so there's one thing good to understand about God Halala. and this is where I end today Daniel let's get this together Daniel chapter 2 verse 20 to 22 Daniel answered and said blessed be the name of God forever for wisdom and might are his he changes the times and seasons that means God has an ability to say you're stuck in this season I'm going to change it <laughs> oh my God hey yeah he said he changes oh my God he does what he changes times and seasons so if a tear was sold into your season like what happened with Israel Israel was supposed to go into the promised land and the ten spies came with an evil report and sowed fear into the soil of the heart and the minds of the Israeli people and it corrupted the season and kept them there for 40 years Jesus Jesus Whew. church you never say I got to do some soul searching Jesus La pata sata. Jesus. Woo! I think I've given you enough for today. Hallelujah. I said I've just given you enough for today. This is times and seasons 101. Come back Sunday for 102. Shavada. Amen. This is this introduction to the material. Hallelujah. Who knows I need this? So there is a cure. He can change times and seasons. Jesus. La Baba Jesus. But you need to understand the dynamic by which he does that. Oh boy. The Bible says, and, and the two shall become what? one and the two shall become what one so God's plan is that as the marriage gets older it gets sweeter because as it gets older you are becoming more and more in what sink if it's getting older and you're going further apart it means an enemy planted something inside <laughs> and the two shall become what one that the word becoming so it, it's a process okay the bible says the path of the just is like a shining light shining what brighter and brighter unto the what perfect day hallelujah you should be up there okay she's coming yes hallelujah shining more and more into the what perfect what day are you ready for this now what you need to do your assignment for this week is lord show me the season i'm in and the lord might show you you've been in this season for 12 years in fact you are there's a female right now you are in a season which is is the season you're in in your marriage 
is after forgiving your husband. You know the season after. After your husband did something atrocious and then you are now what? In the season after forgiving him. When you are rebuilding trust. Are you with me? The problem is that you have been rebuilding for the last five, six, seven years. I just saw that in the spirit. I can even call you. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, does it take seven years to rebuild trust? <laughs> so, you are actually stuck. So, your marriage is stuck in a season. To say, I'm rebuilding. Seven years to rebuild? And said, because of what happened, he must come to me. I can't come to him. Because it hurts. After seven years? After seven years? I think it's about time you forgave and moved on. Are you with me? I think it's about time you what? Forgave and moved on. But you're stuck for seven years. Your marriage is stuck. I'm helping somebody here. I'm speaking to an individual condition. You're stuck. Lift your hands up. Let's stand up. Let's worship God, my God. Because I have got to change sometimes and seasons here. Bata Shavada. Jesus. Hallelujah. Times and seasons. Yes. Say, Heavenly Father, open my eyes to the mystery of the times and seasons of my life. In the name of Jesus. This week, speak to me. Reveal to me how Satan corrupted my seasons so that it will never happen again. And show me what to do. And show me what to do. In the name of Jesus.